So recently, in fact, yesterday itself, a groundbreaking study has been published in the journal Science, which talks about separating enantiomers using plain old mass spectrometry without any additives, without any additional factors. So we are going to discuss about that, how they achieved it in a simplified manner. Of course, if you go for the study itself, it's very complicated. Uh, someone who is following the field and is an expert in the field might be able to fully interpret it. But I would give you the gist of what they have achieved so that we are aware of what are the recent breakthroughs in the field of science. Now, first, let's talk about what is the utility. I mean, why is this achievement important? Well, because generally, if you want to know about, let's say, the enantiomeric excess or, or, you know, if, if there are enantiomers in a particular, let's say, mixture of products, um, you need to use a, another chiral agent uh, so that it can be converted into diastereomers. You might have studied about NMR spectrometry and NMR spectrometry, if you want to differentiate between enantiomers or if you want to find out the, the, the percentage of uh, each enantiomer in a particular mixture, then you need to add or you need to convert somehow into a, into a diastereomer. You have to convert the enantiomer into a diastereomer to be able to observe in the NMR. You need a substrate which is chiral in nature. Here, you are not adding anything excess. You are just doing it by simple mass spectrometry. Now, this particular uh, research utilized something which is called as ion mobility spectrometry, which you can consider as a variation of mass spectrometry. Now, in, a, in, in your plain old mass spectrometry, what happens is, if you, if you are aware of the principle of mass spectrometry, uh, the charged ions are basically propelled. Now in this ion mobility spectrometry, you have a neutral gas. Okay, basically, you can think of it as a gas which does not really interact with the ions. And this neutral gas is there in the tube. Earlier, this particular technique was very helpful for compounds which had a similar charge to uh, ma mass to charge ratio, M by Z ratio. If the molecules have a similar mass to charge ratio, then it will be difficult to separate using conventional mass spectrometry. So that is where you or it will be difficult to observe them by conventional mass spectrometry. So how do you do this? Basically, you introduce this neutral gas and you take help of something which is called as CCS or the collisional cross section. So imagine this that if you have two molecules which have a similar M by Z ratio, but they are structurally very different. Let's say one of them, one of the molecules is small and the other one is highly branched. It has a very complex network, if you, if you can imagine. Then the one which is highly branched will collide more frequently and will also have more, I don't know about the frequency, but it will definitely have more drag. Okay, you can imagine that if, if, a, if a big molecule is passing through uh, gaseous molecules, it is going to face more drag, more resistance as compared to a smaller molecule. So even if their M by Z ratio is the same, still separation can be achieved. So this is the particular technique they have used, that is ion mobility spectrometry. But what happens with chiral molecules? The problem is chiral, mo chiral molecules are, are structurally same or similar, right? There's a very small difference uh, in, the, in their conformation. So what they did was they, of course, used a very complicated or a technique, a, a very advanced technique, let's say not complicated, uh, which helped in the rotation of this molecule in the same direction. So if you have two molecules, let's say two chiral molecules, uh, they have given a very good example of a representative example of a propeller. So you can see it on your screen now. If we rotate both the chiral molecules in the same direction, the propeller is shaped differently. It is very clear from, from the picture over here. And if you, are, if you are rotating them in the opposite direction, then there is no separation. So if you talk about the structural similarity or, or, or the structural shape of the molecule, it changes if both of them somehow are made to rotate in the same direction. Now because of this change in the shape, or what happens is they interact very differently with these gas molecules, the neutral gas molecule that I was talking about. And because they interact now differently with this gas molecule, they face different drag okay or different sort of resistance so and that sort of resistance is is just enough to be able to basically uh, get the chiral separation without the need of any other external agent so this is a tremendous work kudos to the authors in case some of you who is watching this video is more advanced and you want to shed more light on this particular topic, please feel free to do it on the comment section. I would, I would love to see that. And of course, I think other viewers would also love and appreciate that. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, 
please give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next video.